Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Tom Vecchio of FanDuel, who's here to talk about some late round tight ends to target. Tom, just two days ago, we talked about some late round players. Today, we're focusing on the tight ends. What's going on, Tom? I'm doing good. Tight ends is a super interesting position, and we have some viable options in the late round who can provide plenty of fantasy value. Absolutely. This range of tight ends that we're talking about today, it's kind of exactly where I want to live. So we're excited to talk about these particular players. And starting with Hayden Hurst, he was the third tight end in Baltimore, despite being drafted first behind Mark Andrews, behind Nick Boyle. And that was Hurst, traded to the Atlanta Falcons in the offseason. Austin Hooper is now in Cleveland. So a lot of you are expecting Hurst to just walk right in to that Austin Hooper role. You're getting him with an ADP over 100 at this point. Do you buy that Hayden Hurst is just going to magically become Austin Hooper overnight? I'm not buying necessarily the production, but the role should be there. You know, we saw Matt Ryan, or we heard Matt Ryan, I should say, talk up uh, Hayden Hurst a lot in the offseason, saying that he'd been driving up to Atlanta. They'd been working uh, together, just getting some reps down, some throws in because there was no OTAs. And the production might not, you know, match what we saw from Austin Hooper last year, but at least we know that the Falcons are a passing first team and they're willing to go to tight end. If we look back to last year, they had a 60% success rate when targeting tight ends. That was the fifth best in the league uh, per sharp football stats. And they were eighth in yards per attempt. So the role is there when it comes to the tight, the, you know, whoever is playing the tight end for the Atlanta Falcons. And if we look at the projections that we have on number fire for Hurst this year, we're looking at roughly 80 targets, almost 600 yards, four touchdowns, slightly over four touchdowns. We're getting a viable you know, tight end 12, tight end 13, right where he's being drafted at. So I like Hurst. I like the Falcons offense this year, and I kind of want to buy in. Buying in on the cheapest player available makes a lot of sense. You don't have to pay up for Calvin Ridley. You don't pay up for Julio Jones or even Todd Gurley, which you shouldn't do. Instead, you can go for Hayden Hurst, a tight end over 100 ADP, right around a borderline starter at tight end 12-13-ish. Hayden Hurst, a solid, contrib solid contributor to the Atlanta Falcons. Going right around the same range as Hayden Hurst is my guy Noah Fant, who I think we all expected really to come on the second half of last year, and he did once Drew Locke became the starter. Yet this offseason, I feel like everybody's talking about Fant's ex-college teammate, uh, TJ Hawkinson, instead of Fant. The ADP sits at about 108. Again, a borderline starting tight end for you in redraft leagues. Noah Fant, is he being overshadowed because of bringing in Jerry Judy, because of Cortland Sutton? Are we forgetting about Noah Fant here, Tom? I think that's exactly the case. They they drafted uh, not only Judy, they drafted a KJ Hamler. They brought in Melvin Gordon. They still have Phil Lindsay. Uh, Sutton had a great year. You know, and like you said, when we look back to him really having a successful second half, in the five games that Drew Locke started, two of those games he put he put up over 50 yards. You know, he's not going to be targeted too heavily, but this is a piece of an offense that is ready to take a step forward. And like you said, if he's being overlooked, another piece I want to grab. Specifically at tight ends last year, he had the 16th most air yards. He had a solid A dot sitting at 7.8. Uh, a player that can get up the seam, really have those big games. He had that one big one against the Houston Texans where we saw him go for over 100 yards. So if I'm drafting him to be a, a late round tight end who could possibly come to a tight end one conversation, this is a player I want to take a shot on. I'm with you, both Noah Fent and Hayden Hurst. Guys, I want to take a shot on later in my draft. If I miss out on the top 10 ends, or I just don't like the price of what they're going for. I'm Confident with these guys, if not both of these guys, later on in the draft, both Hurst and Fant have the ability to really break out here in 2020. One last tight end to talk about, and it's certainly not a, a youthful guy like Noah Fant or Hayden Hurst, but it's Eric Ebron. We have long heard about Eric Ebron and what he could do. And when he was playing with the Colts, he did that in limited snaps. He was a touchdown machine. I feel like a lot of people don't realize he's in Pittsburgh now with a healthy Ben Roethlisberger. For all of us Vance McDonald's truther out that truthers out there, like Eric Ebron's in a, a better touchdown score. He's better built if he can stay healthy, and he costs you nothing in drafts. Tight end 19 with an ADP around 150. Why are people not talking about Eric Ebron? No, that's a good question. I know Ebron has burned a lot of people, whether it's in season long or DFS over the past few years. You don't play him. He scores three touchdowns on six catches somehow. But he's the starting tight end for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Like you said, uh, Roethlisberger is healthy. He's looking slim. And if we look back to 2018, we can't take anything from 2019 when he played a game and a half. Roethlisberger set a career high in yards and touchdowns. And in that year, we saw the Steelers 
We're fourth best in success rate in targeting tight ends. This is 2018. And third in yards per target. We know that Roethlisberger likes to go to the tight end. And that year, we saw them kind of have a viable two tight end of Vance McDonald and Jesse James. They were putting up big yards. That was behind Antonio Brown and Juju Smith-Schuster. So if everyone's talking about Juju having a rebound year, James Conner is still going to be solid, uh, Deontay Johnson ready to take a step forward, I'm looking at a healthy Ben Roethlisberger who we know loves to throw the ball, and you know Eric Ebron who's tight end 19. So if one of your tight ends get hurt, you happen to roster two of them, you happen to keep two of them on your roster, whatever it may be, he is free in drafts this year. Ebron costs you nothing in drafts, and he has the ability to score touchdowns at a very, very high rate, as we've seen as recently as just a year or two ago. With Ben Roethlisberger healthy, Ebron's going to be one of these guys that get picked up at some point this year, and he's going to prove successful until you then have to drop him. But we'll talk about that later on in the season. There you have it. Those are the late round tight ends that are worth taking a shot on this year in your fantasy football drafts. Tom, we appreciate the time, and good luck in your drafts. Same to you. Talk to you soon. Absolutely. Tomorrow, we'll be joined by Jim Sanis as we take a look at some more fantasy football. For Tom Becchio, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. See you tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.